My name is Fang Fei Miao, and I am a assistant professor in the Department of Dance at the University of Michigan. Usually, I am not a mind reader, but quite often, after I introduce myself to other people under this title, I am pinned down somehow as just a dancer, or just being Chinese. I am a dancer, but I am also the first dancer from the People's Republic of China who received a PhD in the U.S. Yes, there are some and many PhD programs in the U.S. that focus on critical dance studies, and I graduated from one of them. I am Chinese, but I am also an outside insider in between the U.S. and China, and I witness. Crossing over conversations artistically and societally in every single day of my life. Today, with this position as an artist, a scholar, an outside insider, I would like to talk about how dance is not a universal language. Dance seems like a universal language, because artists around the world all use the same instrument, the human bodies. But this concept really overweighs the significant complexities underneath it. And today. I would like to talk a little bit more about those complexities through a performative talk. I will divide the stage into two parts: one representing the U.S. and one representing China. Just、uh, give me one second to bring out my props. Yeah, I know. Why papers? <laughs> Why not? They are very convenient to carry. <laughs> as I step onto the position as an artist, I work very hard to make meaningful communications to my audiences, while at the same time. Not pondering to their expectations. This is not a universal body. It's a body marked by race and gender and size and so many other things. It invites different expectations from different audiences. For example. In the U.S., my body is pretty much marked by race and gender. My audience read me as a body of a Chinese woman, instead of the body of a white man. Whatever I do on stage, they tend to relate that to some. Tai Chi performance, and to my race. Even though that is not my intention at all. As I go across the border to China, my Chinese audience read me more as a trained body. Because there are so many dancing Chinese women on stage, 
this body becomes the norm, my audience would expect to see more virtuosic performance to show our proficiency, like jumps or spins. Or this leg raised really, really, really high, which I cannot do anymore. <laughs> As an artist, I try to unpack those different expectations, but at the same time, confront my audience directly through a performative talk like the one that I am doing right now. As I step away from this position as an artist, and I step onto this position as a scholar, I bring a cross-cultural dimension to the scholarly conversations in the English-speaking academia about how dance is not universal, but rather socially, historically, culturally, politically constructed. There is no universal way to appreciate dance. There's no direct connection between the audience and the performer. But rather, there exists that indirect connection that is highly influenced by society, history, culture, politics, and many other things. For example, in the US, many years ago, I performed a solo to show my sincere pursuit for my dream. In the beginning of the dance, I was performing on the floor to show my longing for my dream and then my resolution to achieve it. In the second half of the dance, I performed by standing up to show the obstacles that I faced with. However, my American audiences read that piece as a abstract development of certain movement motif. They didn't get my specific expression. As I went across the border to China, my Chinese audiences read the piece as evolution. For them, at first, I was performing a fish swimming in the pool, and then I became a reptile trying to search for food. Then I became a gorilla trying to stand up, and eventually the human being standing upright. My Chinese audiences didn't get my specific expression either. As a scholar, I study the socio-historical circumstances that these audiences are in and how that influences their contrasting readings of the same dance performance. I also study what understandings and misunderstandings emerge from that indirect connection. As I step away 
from this position of a scholar and onto the last piece of paper. You know that I start to conclude this talk. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> Here it comes. Artistically and scholarly speaking, death is not a universal language. I choose this topic today because I am in deep love with dance. I don't want it to be seen as something very superficial and just a physical performance. Dance is profound. Dance is intellectual. Dance is culture, history, society, politics, memories, ritual, combinations of them, and so much more. This is why I didn't choose to talk about the Chinese stuff tonight. Because similar to dance, I am much more profound and complicated than how I look. As an artist, a scholar, an outside insider, I am standing in between the US and China. An icy dance connects people together and make very interesting confusions. But it is those confusions that brings us together so that I can talk about dance today. Thank you very much.